you're a demon in the afterlife. Right. 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 That's right. It works every time. So, all right. So now, conversions. Look, I mean, the one thing that's fundamental in all of this, and this is why, in fact, Enterprise Duo and Social Serum are now kind of topics of a potential marriage, so to speak, is that ultimately every business is concerned with its customers. It's why, for example, CRM as an industry during the time of the recession never, ever sunk. It always went up, right, when it came to the, uh, to the growth of the industry because the first thing that people are concerned with as a business in a recession is how do we keep our customers, right? So what you're seeing is regardless of what's going on in the business, meaning work, let's say workforce performance management, internal collaboration, ultimately the purpose of all of that is to conduct better business so that customers will be acquired and become part of your uh, ecosystem or will be retained and will become increasingly loyal. Consequently, one of the things that's being recognized, and this is where it really gets important too, is we have a different kind of customer we're now dealing with. And those very kind of customers are also employees, same people. I mean, ultimately we deal with different kinds of people here, okay? Because what look, one of the things that those like Brian and others who know me here, uh, Mauricio and others, I've heard me say a million times is we don't have a business revolution going on. We have a communication revolution going on. And it's always been a communication revolution. And it affects every single institution that we have in existence, period, and how we interact with those institutions at every level. Consequently, what you see is, okay, expectations change. So we have a, on the business side, what's called a social customer, but this new kind of social person is saying, look, you know what? I can communicate 24-7. I can choose the channels I want to communicate in. If I'm older, it might be traditional channels. If I'm younger, it's new channels. It doesn't matter, really. I mean, there's too much made of which channels are being, which channels, well, let me rephrase it. There's too much being made of which channels are cooler and which channels aren't. That's almost, it's relevant, but it's irrelevant to a large extent. Um, so what they're saying is, look, uh, because I'm a social customer, I can I can talk to somebody, I can get a real-time response or a near real-time response. I'm going to trust this person because I feel there's someone like me, right? They're not they're not someone I know, and that tends to be a real point of confusion. That the, the person I'm talking to, this new kind of person, is someone like me. It's not a person I've been acquainted with. I just feel that they're like me. Why do I feel they're like me? They have similar interests. They have. Um, similar um, beliefs you know, when it comes to, say, politics and other things. So they have things that make me say that I can trust them because I feel they're similar to me. I'll give you an example. Um, how many people in the room actually use review sites of some kind, any kind? Right. Well, like 99.9%. Uh, now, when you read a review, let's say a uh, review on Yelp or a restaurant, you know, you're not reading it for one, one, one star and five star. I mean, you're actually reading the review, right? I mean, you're going into it and you're taking a look at it and you're saying, um, okay, uh, I love this dish. This dish is why I'm going to go to the restaurant. So I'm going to find out who, what, what, what restaurants have this dish. And you read a review and this guy says, great dish, two star restaurant, but the dish is awesome, right? And then you read another review that says, five star restaurant, but the dish sucks. Right? So what do you do? You start thinking, well, maybe I'll go to the two-star because it's really the dish I care about, but I've got to be aware of customer service. But what you're doing is whoops, what you're doing is weighing it from a personal standpoint on how you want to decide what this person is talking to you about. But you feel enough about this person that they're like you. But the reality is really funny if you think about it, because the only thing you know about them at all is that their email handle is like, you know, rabbit dog at AOL.com. And you don't know anything else. You know nothing else about them, but you trust them because you feel, that's the key word, you feel their similar to you. Consequently, what you have is this social customer that you're interacting with, and you're able to impact thousands and millions of those people. So, the way the world starts working all of a sudden is every institution that you're dealing with. <laughs> is an institution that you think should respond the way these individuals and you are talking. And so if it's a business, it's a company like me, right? And you're not saying the company has to be identical, but the company has to provide you with enough of a feeling 
that you're saying, you know, my experience with this company is exactly the kind of experience I expect of a company that's doing the thing that I want it to do. Right? And just, you know, and that's not, by the way, just to make it really clear, that's not every company you deal with. It's a few companies. Most of the companies you deal with, you don't really give a crap about how much you're dealing with. You're just doing a utilitarian buy, and you're taking care of business, and you're done. But there are a few that you care about more. Let me ask you this question. So how many people in the audience actually have a company that they kind of wax enthusiastic about? They kind of like a lot. And they're telling you, exactly. You're all loyal customers or advocates. One of the, if you actually tell someone else about it, you're an advocate. That's what businesses are aimed at with social CRM, right? The thing is, though, because of the world we're living in right now, Because of the world we're living in right now, what we're looking at is that transformation where social customers are saying, okay business, you respond to me the way you want, I will give you value in return. Social CRM says something very simple. It says, okay, as a business then, I need to respond to you, right? Now, that means there's two things that matter to me. The amount of insight I have about you is critical. And that's where the enterprise 2.0 part comes in, because there's constant discussion going on internally about how to deal with customers, what customers to deal with, what segments to deal with, what kind of intelligence is necessary to understand those customers, right? How to improve the processes so that the customers will respond better, etc. That's the internal part. But the other part is bringing the customers into the mix, too, which says, all right, in addition to customers, we're doing all this internally to gain a better idea of, and gaining institutional knowledge about you. But what we need to provide you with is products, services, tools, and consumable experiences that make you comfortable with us in a way that says, I, that says, okay, customer, you can sculpt your experience with us when we give you all of those things, right? And that means you will have control over that. So there's two things going on. E2O is collaboration in service of greater customer insight, which ultimately it's going to lead to. And the customer and the social CRM part is the customer's engagement with the company. But the insight is utilized to improve the engagement. So there's a long-winded version. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're only running for you there anyway.